This is a magical sleep story where you are the main character. Tonight, you will visit old friends in a very special place. Before we begin, find a comfortable position where you will not be disturbed. Make sure that you are not too warm and not too cold. Now, take a nice deep breath in through the nose for a count of three. Hold for four. And release through the mouth for six. As you exhale, imagine all of the tension in your body completely melting away. So that's in for three. Hold for four. And breathe out for six. Allow your body to become heavier and heavier. Imagine that you are breathing out all of your worries and your thoughts and allow your mind to empty. Continue this breathing in your own time. And now, allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm. As we prepare to go on a magical journey. And take a holiday at the Weasley Burrow. You find yourself in your bedroom in the early hours of the morning. Outside, it is still dark, but the very tip of the sun is beginning to creep over the horizon. Your suitcase and broomstick sit in the corner of your room, packed and ready to go, with your animal fast asleep in their cage on top. And then you hear it. The low purr of a car engine far off in the distance. Only this car doesn't use the normal roads. Appearing out of thin air on the horizon, you see the light blue car flying over the rooftops. You almost cannot believe your eyes, and you are reminded just how much you love magic. Before you know it, 
the car pulls up alongside your window. And inside you see four of your friends, all with bright red hair and cheeky smiles. There are the two twins, Fred and George, their brother, Ron, and the youngest sister, Ginny, all waiting for you to get in. The boot of the car pops open and you throw in your case and your broomstick. Ginny opens the door and you climb in from your window and onto the back seat, bringing your animal with you and putting them on your lap. Ron tells you they're sorry for waking you so early, but you can't risk being seen by muggles now, can you? You give Ron a smile, and you gesture to Fred, who is driving, that you are ready to leave. He gives you a mischievous wink as he flicks a silver switch on the dashboard, activating a powerful invisibility spell. A strange but exciting feeling comes over you as you watch the front bonnet fade out of sight. But inside, everything is still as normal. The car begins to pick up pace and climbs up above the rooftops and away from your house. As you look down onto the street, you see a muggle walking their dog, but they are blind to your presence above them, and the rest of the village are sound asleep, unaware of this magical journey that you are taking. You realize how lucky you are to be here now. The sun has half risen over the rooftops and casts an enchanting glow across the sky. The clouds become golden and bright and as you drive towards a thick cloud in front of you, you feel as though you are about to enter a completely new world. Laughter and excitement fill the car as you soar through the golden white mist. You have always wanted to fly in this car, and now you can hardly believe that you finally are. Before you know it, the car emerges from the top of the cloud, and you are met with a blast of sunlight, and a beautiful countryside, filled with rolling hills and a dark green forest. Below you is a long curved bridge made of grey brick with enormous archways. 
On the bridge runs a train track, a very familiar sight. For this is the journey that you make every year to study at the finest wizarding school in the world. The car flies over the bridge and you descend into a huge valley filled with a shimmering lake backed by the rising sun. As you glide over the lake, you reach your hand out of the window and trace your fingers in this enchanting water. You take a deep breath of this beautiful morning air, and you feel all the worries of yesterday, today, and tomorrow leave your mind. You are completely free. The car takes to the sky again. And you are now soaring over huge fields of green and yellow. In the distance, you see a solitary wooden cottage standing five stories high. Each floor slants in a slightly different direction, giving the house a gentle zigzag shape. The ground floor is made of grey stone brick, while the rest of the house above is made of wooden panels and held in place by wooden beams coming up from the lower roof. At the top is a crooked chimney which puffs out a gentle silver smoke. The car slowly descends and lands with a surprising smoothness on the long dirt road leading up to the house. As you come to a stop, you suddenly get the feeling that you are home at last. When you leave the car, you are met with the smell of bread baking. And as you look to the front door, there stands the head of the house wearing a thick grey cardigan. Her kind and gentle face is impossible to forget. Mrs. Weasley takes you in her arms with a welcoming smile and you feel a surge of warmth and comfort running through you. She has an angelic aura 
that completely calms and relaxes you. And you feel as though nothing in this world could possibly harm you. As you enter the front door, you remove your shoes and come first to the kitchen. The open stone fireplace burns gently, warming the entire house. The brown panelled windows are small, but they let in a huge amount of light, as if by magic. The wooden beams crisscross along the ceiling, and the clay coloured tiles cover the floor in the shape of diamonds. In front of you is a long wooden table, big enough for all the family, with room on the end for a special guest. No two chairs are the same, they all have their own character, and placed over the table there is a checkered cloth of green, yellow, and red. Above you is a tall clock with faces of each member of the family, and around the clock face are descriptions of where they might be, such as at work, or school, or flying the car without permission. Right now, however, all of the faces are at home. On the table is newly baked bread, and you see Mrs. Weasley wave her wand as a bread knife lifts off the table and begins to slice through. As a piece falls onto the board, there is a light steam rising from the bread. She puts it on a small white plate and hands it to you. The smell is incredible, and as you take your first bite, you feel the soft, warm and fluffy texture and the beautiful, fresh taste. You think this bread might be enchanted, because as you eat, you begin to feel all the muscles in your body soften and become heavy, and your mind is clear and free. You thank Mrs. Weasley with a smile, and continue to explore the burrow. You round the corner into the lounge, and there is the second head of the house, enjoying a short morning nap. His floppy hat has fallen over his eyes, and he has begun to snore quite loudly. Ginny runs to her father with blushing red cheeks and quickly wakes him. Mr. Weasley looks at you, and at once recognises your face. He speaks your name with a gentle voice, and takes your hand in his, welcoming you to his home. 
there is a soft rug underneath you, which wraps around your feet like a heated blanket. You wiggle your toes as you enjoy this warmth running through your feet. There are two armchairs and one big sofa. Across all of them are a collection of different coloured blankets and hand-stitched cushions, all homemade. You take a seat in the armchair and the blankets and cushions are as soft as clouds. In the corner, you spy a pair of knitting needles that are working away on their own, making something brand new, but you can't work out what it is just yet. There is a crooked wooden bookshelf behind the sofa, filled with books old and new, and the smell of old parchment is enchanting. You reach in and take a book of famous wizarding tales, and you flick through, enjoying the fun stories and the beautiful hand-drawn pictures. Rabbits in the meadows. Wizards crossing dangerous rivers. And dragons flying over mountains. As you close the book, you look around this magical home with its old grey stonework, the wooden beams above you, the log fire burning, and the peaceful sounds of the burrow. You stand up and head towards the thin wooden stairs. But before you can reach them, the twins tap you on the shoulder. You turn to see them and the rest of the family dressed in Quidditch gear in the red and gold colours of their house. Fred and George carry small clubs in one hand and their broomsticks in the other. You look to your left and see Ron wearing a thick leather helmet with a slightly nervous smile. Outside the window you see the large open garden and at each end stands three tall hoops. Ginny asks if you'd like a quick game and before she can finish, you race to your belongings, grab your trusty broomstick, and run outside with the family into the hot afternoon sun. Even Mr. Weasley has decided to play. For old time's sake, he tells you. And Mrs. Weasley has reluctantly agreed to referee. However, she is sure to remind you all many times to be extra careful. The two eldest brothers, Bill and Charlie, are visiting home for the weekend and have come down to play too. Eight players ready for a good game. Bill tells you that Percy, their perfect prefect brother, 
is too busy studying and writing love letters to come and join the fun. Being the guest, you get to choose now who is on your team and what position you play. As the game begins, you take to the air on your broom and fly to your position. You soar round the grounds of the burrow, dodging the bludgers and working well with your teammates. As your team scores the first goal, It is quickly followed by a goal from the other side as you watch the quaffle fly over your head into your left goalpost. Laughter, excitement and cheer fill the air as the game continues on. Another goal from the opposition. But your team responds and with three quick passes, there is an equaliser. It goes on like this, with goals back and forth, and no team taking a clear lead. With the score level now, the game is too close to call, and the next goal will win the match. You'd really like to win this game, so you decide to take things into your own hands. You catch the quaffle mid-air, and you begin a swooping manoeuvre over the top of the house. At the end of the garden, you fly around a huge oak tree and you manage to lose whoever was chasing you. You pass to a teammate and they return it in a quick one-two. You are now one-on-one -on -one with their keeper. You dodge past the keeper and throw the quaffle straight through the middle hoop, winning the game. As you land in the garden, your team surrounds you, cheering and laughing. As the game comes to an end, you celebrate your close victory and lovingly tease the losing side, who, despite their defeat, are still smiling. The afternoon is drawing on, and Mrs. Weasley has asked for some help preparing dinner. She is making a special pie a recipe passed on from her grandmother's grandmother and a family favourite. Bill, Charlie and Mr Weasley pack away all the gear and the goalposts as you and the rest of the family head back inside. Single file behind the bobbing red curls of Mrs Weasley. On the table is a pile of ingredients, too many to count, but you see a variety of vegetables, all of which, Mrs Weasley tells you, need expertly chopping. As Mrs Weasley begins to cook, 
an old record player starts to spin, and you watch her dance around the kitchen, humming along to the music. She wiggles her bum and pulls funny faces as she tries to embarrass her children. You share a glance with Fred and George and you try to hide your laughter as you see that Ginny and Ron have both turned red. This energy is infectious, and you cannot help but feel such a warmth for Mrs. Weasley. You roll up your sleeves and join in with the preparation. You take out your wand and set a small knife to chop the vegetables While with your hands, you begin to stir together the sauce, which has begun to bubble nicely and gives off a beautiful smell. As Mrs. Weasley fades the music, you check in with Ron who seems to be having a hard time rolling the pastry and is looking rather embarrassed. You offer to help him while Mrs. Weasley is distracted and he thanks you with a sheepish smile. As you finish your preparation, Mrs. Weasley sways her wand and a square glass dish is being lowered onto the table. As it slowly descends, you see all of your combined ingredients coming together inside the dish. And finally, your sauce is poured over them. As you wave your wand, the layer of pastry places itself over all the ingredients. As small pastry flowers begin to decorate the top, you notice that the pie is cooking by itself in the dish as it begins to turn a golden brown colour giving off a wonderful smell. And when the dish finally lands on the table right before your eyes is a beautiful and magical supper ready to eat. The setting sun beams through the window, providing the supper with its very own golden spotlight. With a twinkle in her eye, Mrs. Weasley gives you a wide grin, and you feel that homely comfort running through you once again. On the table, you watch four tall candles begin to light on their own. And you notice a small silver jug floating around the table as it magically pours everyone's favourite drink into their glass. As the pale liquid touches the bottom of your glass, you see it change 
and turn into the drink that you are most craving right now. You take your seat and wait patiently with the family. You watch a perfectly sliced piece of pie lift out of the dish and float down onto your plate. Once everyone is ready to begin, you take your first bite. Instantly, you are taken to another world within yourself. A place of warmth, of colour and of beauty. You cannot believe how amazing this tastes. And you feel proud to have helped. As the family enjoy their meal, you look around the table and join in with the jokes, the laughter and the conversation. There is a magical and enchanting feeling to this home, coupled with the beautiful family that surrounds you. And you find yourself saying out loud that you never want to leave. Mrs. Weasley turns to you with a warm smile and tells you that you are most welcome whenever you want and you can stay as long as you like. As the meal comes to an end, you are given a small gift from Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, wrapped in thick brown paper, tied with string. A welcome to the family present. You carefully open it and unravel a hand-knitted jumper in your favourite two colours. And of course, with your initial on the front. You pull it over your head and feel an uncontrollable smile fill your face. It is a perfect fit. With a flick of his wand, Mr. Weasley begins to wash the dishes. There is a bowl of hot, bubbly water where plates go one by one to be scrubbed by a magical brush. Then they float along the draining board to be rinsed under a tap and dried off with a towel. And finally, they stack themselves in the cupboard above the counter. Ginny, Ron and the twins say that they have something to show you out in the meadow. As you leave the front door feeling full and satisfied, you begin to walk down a track through the meadow. The sun has nearly set and a purple-red shimmer covers the darkening sky. Around you is tall green grass and the smell of summer lingers in the air as you follow this dirt track. As night draws in, 
you arrive at a small clearing filled with summer flowers. Each of you takes out your wand, and with a gentle spell, a pile of blankets and cushions appear on the ground. You lie in this soft haven and gaze up at the night sky. The moon is a small crescent tonight and a lot darker than normal, which means the stars shine even brighter. As your eyes adjust, you see specks of white dust dotting the sky. They seem to be arched over the burrow, as if providing a magical protection of this wonderful place. And then it begins. A parade of shooting stars begin to dance across the sky above the cottage. Some have tail lines of yellow and red, and even green, purple or blue. A multitude of colours illuminate the sky, and they seem to be telling their own story of how the stars came to be. Fred tells you that this only happens once a year and that you have chosen the perfect time to visit. It is unlike anything that you have ever seen. As the last shooting star fades into the night, you begin to walk back to the burrow. You feel a blast of heat as you enter the front door once again. In the lounge, by the crackling fire, you join the rest of the family, who are enjoying a warm, enchanting drink. When she sees you, Mrs. Weasley takes the pot that is hanging above the fire and pours you a fresh, hot drink. Homemade, she tells you, to help you fall asleep peacefully and dream of beautiful things. You thank her and take your first sip and you feel any remaining worries or tension leave your body like a rising steam leaves a chimney. 
In the corner, Charlie is drawing a fearsome-looking dragon. Standing on top of a mountain, with gusts of flame coming from its mouth. Mr. and Mrs. Weasley are sitting hand in hand, talking quietly and laughing together. Ginny is reading a storybook in an armchair. Ron and Bill lie in front of the fire, relaxing after a long day. And Fred and George are sitting together, designing a brand new suite for their collection. You sit and enjoy this calming atmosphere your warm drink and this wonderful company. You feel yourself now drifting off as your body and your eyes become heavy. The rest of the family feel the same and they decide it is time for bed. As you bid your good night Mrs. Weasley waves her wand once again and you watch a newspaper begin to crumble and a small flame lights inside it as it gives off a gentle heat. She tells you to let this float in your room to keep it a perfect temperature. As you wander slowly up the stairs, you are followed by this floating warmth. Your bedroom is right at the top of the house, but your legs are feeling heavy and you're not sure you'll make it before dropping to sleep. As you climb the thin, uneven staircase, you notice the walls are covered with pictures of the family. As you pass the frames, you see how the family has grown. From pictures with Mr. and Mrs. Weasley on their wedding day. Followed by a picture with Bill as a baby. The next with the addition of Charlie. Then Percy. Then the twins. Followed by Ron. And then Ginny until you see a full family portrait at the end. These are some of your favourite people.
you realize that while being distracted, you have reached the very top floor. And ahead of you is your room. On the door is a small sign with your name. As you enter the room, there is the faint smell of lavender. The room is small, with a wooden floor covered with a large blue rug, a chest of drawers, and a wardrobe in the corner. When you open them, you see that all of your things have already been unpacked, and sitting by the window is your animal, who has been patiently waiting for you, but who has also been watching over you today, as they do every day, keeping you safe. You have missed them today, and you sit on your bed by the window and gaze out up at the night sky as you pet your most faithful companion. You see one final shooting star of pure white curve across the horizon and you make a single wish. You are reminded of the wonderful adventure that you have had today. And the words of Mrs. Weasley that you are welcome back any time. You lie down onto this cloud-like bed and you feel your whole body sink into the soft mattress. The newspaper floats in the centre of the room and radiates a gentle warmth which lulls you deeper and deeper into relaxation. You feel Mrs. Weasley's drink working its magic now as your thoughts begin to fade and you know that tonight you will dream of wonderful things amazing places beautiful animals and magical times with the best of friends This is your new home that will always be here for you whenever you need it. You feel yourself now become heavier and heavier as you drift deeper and deeper into a peaceful sleep.